such a good atmosphere this morning, enough to wake up all nations of people to give thanks, to give praises. Let everybody know one to another that God is here. He has taken over the land. He, with his son, has done great things for all. So everyone out there in the land, would you just raise your hands to Jesus Christ of Nazareth because God sent his son into the world to save, to justify, to glorify, given to all men from the Father. How great thou art. We're so grateful to have him with us this morning. I know it's just a picture, but it represents the Father. And we want to thank God so much for everything this morning. And we're going to ask all nations of people to keep your hands raised to Jesus Christ. For this is a show for you. We're televising for you. Another thing, another world, presenting the kingdom of God. So good, so good, so grateful to have Jesus with us. I want to thank you so much for everything. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world. And thank God the Father says, Amen to his Son. I want to give God all the praises and the glory forever and ever. My heart says, Thank you, Lord, for all that thou hast done. Even this morning, you are a blessing to me everyone. Waking us up. Starting us on our way. We praise you dear Jesus. We praise you oh God for the son of thy love. For Jesus who died and now gone back to glory to be with his father. Thank you so much. Thank you dear Jesus. Amen and amen, amen. I see letters that are written. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. May the anointing go out and give praises to our God. May the spirit of the living God move and bless you this morning. May some of you see there's a change in your life. Thank you, Jesus, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Give it God all the praises. We don't give him enough. We don't give him enough. So praise our God. Praise his holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Amen. Daniel, would you come up to his seat? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. That you might sit in the side of You know, Daniel, I like your name. Thank you. Your name in the Bible, huh? May God bless you with the wisdom and dreams like Daniel had and the interpretation. God be with you. It was years ago that I was sitting with my Lord. They said, I said, my Lord, sit down the right hand. But I was sitting with this man in whom I call Angel Man. 
who I knew and understood by the spirit that came from him. And it circled around my heart. And I knew it was Jesus. I don't know how people feel about my testimony, but that doesn't matter. It happened to me. One day, I was sitting by him. And we had gone to this church. And I looked at him and I said, I want to know more about God. Like I'm looking at you, I looked at him. I want to know more about God. Well, he didn't say anything at first. Nothing at all. He just looked at me. And I said, well, I guess he didn't hear me. And I repeated myself. I said, I want to know more about God. Then he turned his head and he said, Mrs. Turner, I'm looking at the man. Well, I thought, how could that be? I said, I'm asking for the third time. <laughs> I want to know more about God. And he looked back at me, he said, louder, Mrs. Turner, I'm looking at the man. Well, at that time, young in spirit, I didn't understand him, because he said, I'm looking at the man. But later on up the road, I began to understand. When we're born again, we're a reflection of Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you this morning, I want to know more about God. Can you tell me? Now, this picture here shows us like unto a, a man of creation. Old, old man. Even in Revelation tells us how he would look, but I don't see the eyes are red flamed. <laughs> but I see his hair. And I see a throne. So I'm asking you, and it's, it, it lives in my heart, I want to know more about God. Because he's a father, he's a creator of the whole universe. And I know in the book of Matthew it starts with the son, Jesus. But back in times of old, we think on times of the creation on until he made. He made the heavens and the earth. We know that. But the greatest to me started when he spoke to Moses. When he told about the about the burning bush. Mm -hmm. And he called himself, Moses said, Who who shall I say to send me? After the Lord spoke to him, he said, I am that I am. So I'm asking you, above in all that, who is he? What name was he himself, gave himself? It had to be great. There's no other name I'm sure like into Jesus, but even his name, would you tell everyone about the name, the name first, and you can name them. Well, I'll try. Um, in the Old Testament, for example, God's name or various forms of his name is mentioned like 6,824 times in the oh, Old Testament. Oh my goodness, really? Yes. Um, some of the various names define his character. In those days, when you were given a name, it defined, it was some defining feature about that person. In society today, at least in the US, it's not as important what name you may give someone. Uh, there's probably some other countries that it still is important but 
not the way it was back in the ancient times, the days of old. When they gave somebody a name, it defined who they were. It was a defining name of their character. So, for example, uh, some of the names that are given to God are El Shaddai. Many of us have already heard that before, meaning Lord God Almighty. More of God Almighty. Um, Lord God Almighty. Lord. Yes, and it's first mentioned in Genesis 17.1. So, some of the other names, if I can pronounce them right, El Elyon, the Most High God. Um, that, for example, is mentioned 28 times in the Old Testament. So, another name is Adonai. We've heard of that, at least most of us have, meaning Lord, Master. And actually, that's used 434 times in the Old Testament. So, one we pretty much are familiar with is Yahweh, meaning Lord or Jehovah. And that's the one most used in the Old Testament. It's used 6,519 times. So many, many times um, it's used. Um, one more, for example, is jo Jehovah Nisi, uh, spelled N-I-S-S-I, -S -S meaning the Lord, my banner. That, however, it's only used once in the Old Testament, so there's many names. Uh, another, for example, is Jehovah Ra'a, R-A-A-H, the Lord, my shepherd. So, and... Were, were, this, were these names given, say for instance, like people call him that, mm -hmm. or did he call himself that? Many of these, um, well, I think mostly he did um, give himself that. There is one example, um, if I can find it, where one lady gave him the, a name, and it was the only time a name was given to him by a human being mm -hmm. that is mentioned. All of those that you have already mm -hmm. seem to be high and above. Right. Just even to listen to those names, high, high. Yes, they had, those names had status, they had importance, they had reverence. Mm -hmm. You know, today we have names, um, you know, like in sports, LeBron James, you know, as the king, you know, make that association with LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Etc. You know, you have other actors, uh, rock stars, athletes, etc. that are given nicknames. Some, for example, Air Jordan for Michael Jordan. Uh, they have their reverence, so to speak, in humanistic ways, but nowhere do they carry the status that is given uh, God Almighty. Mm -hmm. To me, all of those are in honor. Mm -hmm. They, the names that you called and described. Mm -hmm. So he must, at that time, presented himself in a certain way that you could almost understand why mm -hmm. his name was as it was. Because outside of those names, it is not written, is it? Right, right. Outside, yes, outside the context of really the Bible, outside the context of the territory in which um, the biblical framework, Israel and all those nations surrounding it, right, I'm sure it had much relevance back then. So. You know, as you, as you're talking, to me, they fear for, fear for names. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the way I feel. Right. Very fearful. Right, real reverence given the Magi, they came from afar, you know. They heard about people really did fear the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And fear is not to be necessarily afraid of, mm -hmm. but it's to have a reverence mm -hmm. to, uh, a real strong reverence to uh, just who that is in their name. So. Mm -hmm. To me, all of them associate with judgment. Mm -hmm. 
a timing. Each one of them has a timing. This is what I'm hearing from the Lord. His name is like time. Everything about him, from him, presenting time. Like there was certain times his name was mentioned. There must have been some kind of performance in heaven as well earth could relate to him. And as I look at the picture, I'm sure he's much more fearful than what what's presented here. Well, it does say, it does state in the Bible that even the demons fear and shudder uh, at the mention of his name. So, uh, right. So. Mm. Demons? Yeah. Those demons, you know, good ones, bad ones, uh, you know, they all have seen him. You know, since the creation of time. Yet, uh, for example, it didn't do enough to scare Satan. Uh, you know, he had the first major sin, uh, which was pride, and that was his downfall, and he took a third of the angels with him. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they got to see and be in the presence of, of the Lord God Almighty, and yet they turned. They had free will choice, they turned from him. I know in the book of Isaiah, where it stated he, he created the evil and the good. I'm going to ask you a question. I want to know more about God. Uh -oh. <laughs> Why did he create evil? Or did evil turn to be evil? Started out good, but because of free will choice, would the would he yet own the word evil? A lot of people, the argument goes, believe that God created e evil. God didn't create evil, but he did create man with a free will choice to choose to obey or disobey him. And that was the same in the Garden of Eden. Man had that choice. They were told not to eat of certain fruit in the garden, but obviously they were deceived uh, by Satan and they did eat of it. Uh, the argument is God didn't create us to be robots and that all we do is walk around and obey him and have no free will choice because that's not freedom. Freedom is where you do have a choice in the matter to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing. Um, but yes, there is a strong argument out there that God created evil. God did not create evil. Man, Satan and man chose, they made a free will choice and there's an argument called the principle of federal headship where the action of one affects all. So the choice that Adam and Eve made affected all of mankind mm -hmm. in a sense. They're in a state of sin. The action of however Christ can affect mankind as well in a more positive way to receive in faith that gift of forgiveness and eternal salvation. That's a principle of federal headship where the action of Christ affects all of us as well. So on the one hand, it affected man in a negative way through the fall and sin and separated us from Christ. However, Christ's death on the cross created an opportunity to enter into a relationship with him. When Christ died, that temple or the curtain in the temple was torn in two, meaning there's no more barrier between man and God. They now have that opportunity to enter into that relationship with God as it was intended to be. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's holy. Mm -hmm. All reference comes unto man to honor God. Mm -hmm. Now, you say the demons, they tremble. Mm -hmm. Do they tremble now? They're so bold here. And yet, he's so mighty. For every name that you have mentioned, that's bold and mighty and great and awesome. How now is it that God, who sits on the throne, 
looks down on the earth and he watches like it is written. His eyes are watching. That's what is written. And he see because Satan wanted his throne to be like him. Now he has no power towards heaven. Uh, heaven has none towards earth. Him. So we come into the book of Revelation. Close by, the Bible says, and when Jesus turned over it into the Father, he turns it over to the Father. Now it appeared to me like everything after the death of Christ, the Holy Spirit came. And we find that God is taking over. Look at the things out there in the world now. Okay, would you turn to St. John, the 17th chapter, the first verse. And all be well in Christ. What does it say? John 17. St. John. St. John, 17th chapter, the first verse. Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus talking to his Father. Yes. And so many people cannot relate Christ with his Father as though he had not. But here, let's say, here he sat. His name is names that you call. Would you read four and five? I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, glorify Father. me. Father. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Now, Father. Glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Before the world was. Before the world was. He was there, right? Yes. So nothing is taken from God. Nothing. He came in the place for him to reconcile mm -hmm. us. Back into God. Mm -hmm. yes. Back to the authority. Mm -hmm. Back to your highness. The almighty God. So the question is, God is almighty. Yes. So we should fear him every day, right? And acknowledge him through and by his son. Because one scripture said, I have given them thy name. But he did not call those names that you call. So how would he give him the glory through his name? He said, I have given them thy name and they have received it. It's still in John. So, it evidently, the name, he said, I have given them that name, and they have known that you have sent me. They have received, but giving back that name. What name was Jesus talking about? He said, I have given them that name. So, is it, what name? Is it because they see Jesus and through his name, by the Spirit? He said, no man knows the Father but the Son, and to whom he will reveal. How did I get to know those names that you call? 
only by the Spirit. Because I'm telling you, those names that we hear, that you name, are not called today, right? Very seldom you hear a song that been, they sing, and they'll say those words, call him that. But it's not often that you hear, great Jehovah. But we hear Jesus' name. So by the name of Jesus, through the Spirit, maybe that's how we receive it. His name. <laughs> that's deep. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, that's deep. I had a cloth that I was going to write on each one a piece of paper to lead into his name. But you got them. I have given them thy name. They have received me. So what name Jesus was talking about except his name sealed for in heaven there's a record and the record for earth is the spirit the water and the blood sealed so Jesus name had to be sealed sealed in our hearts and in our minds. And when we receive Jesus, we receive the Father. Mm -hmm. This is the only way of my understanding. I want to know more about God. Because that, there he is. There he is right there. Well, yes, um, because it does say uh, you are sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. So yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. There's three to bear record in heaven. That's the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So in heaven, there's your Father. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt the moments, and we beheld his glory. The glory has ever the only begotten of the Father. There was the Son. And the spirit. So how is it that people don't recognize all the Trinity? How? Why do they pick one and, and lay on that one and does not or will not? It, it appears they cannot <laughs> come into the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the Father. So simple. I don't know why they can't, but you're emphasizing a good point. Um, and even the point of do, do people really fear God, his name. I'm sure there are many Christians throughout the world that do have a genuine Solomon, solemn reverence for his name. But I think for the most part throughout the world, no, you, you mentioned the name to, of Jesus in a conversation with non-believers. Mm -hmm. And boy, that just raises uh, an attitude real yes, quick. It and it really separates the believer from the non-believer. Uh, okay, is it because, according to what you had read, he carries the same power mm -hmm. that his father did. I think, uh, you know, when you're a non-believer, when you're in a state of sin, one, you're separate from God. To hear his name in the form of Jesus, uh, that I don't, a lot of times people don't want to face the truth. And they don't want to face the truth in the name of Jesus Christ. And to mention that name, then... They have to basically cross a line. Uh, they either stay on this side or they cross that, come to terms with who Jesus Christ is. And many people in that state of sin 
you know, they're alienated from them. They're fearful of them, fearful in a very frightening way from the name of Jesus. So I enjoy this because it's so important to recognize the Father. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning right there. Yes, yes. And we'll be the end. You know, we'd, re we'd rather not face what's coming. In many ways, we'd rather remain ignorant and not have to think about it, not have to deal with things. But a judgment day is coming. And as we talked about last week, you know, Christ is going to sit there on his throne and separate the sheep from the goats. Uh, if your name's in the book of life, if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you really don't have much to worry about because... You're going to go with the sheep. Those that don't know him, those whose name is not in the book of life, those whose name is in the book of works, meaning uh, they did not receive Jesus Christ. You know, as it states, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is that's going to be a final, definitive judgment uh, on human beings. And guess lives. who's going to judge? It? Yeah. Who's going to judge? It? Um, Jesus Christ. He's been given all authority on heaven and on earth. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Well, it rises another question quickly. But what about him? Is he going to judge too? I All believe. Just set up on the yeah. judgment seat of Christ up here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, God will be there to judge. He will execute the final judgment uh, for every human being that has ever been born, conceived, in the whole entire world. So. Okay, during that time of judgment, I'm sure people out there can wonder about this answer. Who will they see on judgment day? And we know God is a spirit, but everything is going to turn to be spiritual. Mm -hmm. Everything. Well, the great white throne judgment, um, I, I believe, and it's going to be Jesus sitting there. And, uh, well, these are the things they've done to him, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love it. It's interesting. Amen. Amen. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Because it's good to know him after it's been sealed with the promise. Where they come from. Who originated. All of this. Who gave power to who? And where did the power come from? Jesus said when he went back, he was sent the comforter, but it was but it would come from God. Mm -hmm. That's God's spirit. Mm -hmm. So wherever the spirit is, there's God. Yeah. Right? right? You know, and you know, even Christ himself mentioned several times if you've if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So there's that oneness, even though it's the Trinity, three and it's three and one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That, that, that's awesome. Tony, would you come up just quickly? No, praise God, you stay right there. All have is saying, and all have right over here. Over here. Hearing, 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 awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yes. He who set it up on the throne. Amen. And at his right hand is God, is Jesus, his son. Yes. He sits on the throne. Mm -hmm. I, I had the other picture of Jesus, but however, God mm -hmm. created the heavens and the earth. Yes, he did. Everything. There was nothing. Yes. It was born. And it was void. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit rises up. Hallelujah. Coming up. Mm -hmm. Out of the depth yes. comes the Spirit of God. Yes. 
feel the power. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. The power. There's this power in the spirit. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's so powerful even now that he moves throughout the whole universe. Yes, he does. And the people are not recognizing the spirit of God. Mm. Mm -mm. It is God, 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 God. Yes, it is. So what we do, we live for him, for him, never forgetting who is the beginning of yes, the creation yes, yes. of the world. Yes. How great thou art. Oh, yes, he is. Yes. How great thou art. We, got, we, 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 we must bring him forward, bring him to the front line. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. People have him on the back line, you know what I'm saying, back burner. Yeah. But no, no, this is the hour to bring him forward. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because when you look <clears throat> out there in the world today, everything is going on. Much sin is in the world and people not reverencing God at all. They don't fear God. As a matter of fact, they're trying to take the Ten Commandments totally away. And that originated from Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So it cannot be moved. And when the Day of Judgment do come, He's going to judge these people that has been trying to take him out of the world with their speeches, with their actions, with everything. But it, the word still stands. It's not going anywhere. It's forever in the air. He spoke it. It's done. And it's there. People better realize that God's word is not going to move. He said, I am that I am. And he, who hallelujah. He spoke the word, and the word is God. God is, it's him. So they, people cannot get away from that. It's not going to go anywhere. So he's coming to judge. Jesus, he's sending Jesus with the power to come and judge the world. He's coming. He's going to judge the sins of his world. So people better get ready because it's, you can see the signs everywhere. It's all over the world. Not only in one place, it's everywhere. So Jesus is coming, everybody. He's really coming back. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, he is. That's beautiful. So as the Father sent his son, yes, and the son gave this life, for us to be saved before the great day of his wrath. Yes, 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 yes. His wrath. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, Jesus yes. came of grace and truth. Yes. But here's the man of wrath. Hallelujah. Yes, it this is. This is the man who has indignation. <laughs> Glory. Yes, sir. Who has held waiting. Mm -hmm. This is the one. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is so filled with great compassion, but his blood was left here, those three in one. Yes, yes. yes. they heard. Yes, by our witness. Mm -hmm. They bear witness. So, but when he, he turns it back over to the Father, Jesus yes. turns back to the Father, and so the time has come. Yes, the book is. of judgment. Everybody being judges while well, putting S there. Yes. It's it's here. The Lord allow me to bring this. This is the end. He's the beginning. And the end. Right. And the end. The first and the last. Here it is, right here. That's right. So we give you God Almighty. And what is one of the great words you use? Uh, all my dear. Jehovah. Jehovah. Yes, yes. So, any more? I think. Well, I think 
that's coming to me now, because Jesus died and shed his blood, we have to be ever careful how we represent him. We don't want to put him to open shame because we're going to go in judgment for that as well. So it behooves everybody to try to stay in prayer, keep yourself up with the Lord as much as possible. As Brother Turner said once, he said it's going to take everything you can muster up to get into the kingdom of heaven. I remember him saying that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a lot, but we must press, press forward to go forward to see Jesus. And, and that great day of judgment, just like he mentioned, the great white throne judgment, that's not going to be good at all. All is well. You took Tommy to play. But all is well. And all is good. Amen. Yes, it is. And all represents God the Father. And as Tommy plays, we will thank God. Thank God, see? Yeah. I never heard them say, thank Jesus. They thank God. Yes. It's always God we thank. Yes. Because we know that he is the author mm -hmm. and the finisher. Yes. Finisher. Yes. 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 Finisher. Finisher. Of our faith. Yes, he is. So that means he he's the one that gives us faith. Mm -hmm. Play, Tommy. Play. Amen and amen. 